Hello. Um, so I'm going to talk about why walking is inspiring. Um, and as you'll see, the title of my presentation is Ramble On, uh, which is what I'm going to do for the next 10 minutes or so. Um, just a quick show of hands before we start. How many people uh, seated here actually walked over here this evening? Oh, marvellous. Good on you. Very good. OK, so if you did walk, you can feel a little bit smug right now, because uh, right now you will be feeling more creative, a bit more in touch uh, with the world, uh, and a little bit more connected to your surroundings uh, than you are if you didn't walk. So good on you. Well done. Um, now, I love walking, and I think all able-bodied planners should walk as much as they possibly can. Um, today, what I want to do is give you five reasons for why walking will make you a better planner, and I want to finish with a modest proposal. So here we go. So the first reason planners should love walking is because walking helps you have more ideas. Um, now, this feels kind of intuitively right. Uh, often when we're feeling stuck for an idea, lots of us will go for a walk, uh, and generally speaking, it helps. But does walking really help you have more ideas uh, than sitting down? Well, tonight I can exclusively reveal that yes, it does, uh, thanks to a little experiment, a highly scientific experiment that we did at Ogilvy uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we set out to prove that kind of walking helps you to have more ideas uh, than sitting down. So what we did was we took two groups of planners. Uh, we made uh, one group of them uh, sit at their desks as normal, and uh, we made the other lot go out for a bracing walk along the River Thames. Uh, here they are, looking suitably braced. Um, so then what we did was we uh, got them to do the same creativity test uh, when they got back, uh, and we got them to do the old classic, how many uses of a brick can you think of in two minutes? So what happened? Well, the sitters did all right. They were solid. They came up with, on average, 8.5 ideas per person, and they had some good, sensible uses for a brick, like uh, building a house or using it as a doorstop. The walkers, however, did a lot better. Uh, they, in fact, came up with 11 uh, uses for a brick in two minutes. That's 25% more ideas. Uh, and what's more, they came up with slightly more uh, wacky and uh, uh, sort of radical uh, ideas uh, for brick. So I'll, I'll give you a, a flavour of some of those now. So we had disguise it as gold bullion to pay off Colombian gorillas, <laughs> sink a pig in water, and uh, this is rather disturbing, Korean swimming lessons. Your guess is as good as mine on that one. I, I don't know. Um, so, so I think the, me the, the lesson from all of this is if you want to think up weird shit like that, then do more walking. OK, so the second one. Uh, walking is great for planners because walking helps you see the world uh, differently. So when you're out walking, you notice more things. Uh, you see the world very differently than if you were sitting in a car. So, you know, take, for instance, this sign, follow diversion. Um, if you are a motorist, then this is simply an instruction to take uh, another direction uh, from your usual route. If you are a pedestrian, however, follow diversion could be a life philosophy. Uh, and it could be actually quite a nice life philosophy for a planner. Um, so. Basically, kind of walking helps you raise your consciousness. Um, here is the uh, writer and committed walker, Ian Sinclair, talking about uh, how walking raises your consciousness. It's a quiet clip. So. Practice it has a form of breathing and memory, touching the ground. It's the way that narrative presents itself. I don't think any other form engenders narrative in quite the same way. If you're in a car, you're in a pod, you're, you're in a kind of dream, you're sealed off, it's a reverie. If you're on a bicycle, you've got to be so conscious of the, you know, the traffic surrounding you just to survive that there's no time to get into this kind of stream of natural consciousness, which is walking. And therefore, walking becomes the most natural form for lifting your consciousness. There you go. So the most natural form of uh, uh, raising your consciousness, according to Ian Sinclair. And I guess uh, lots of people uh, have thought uh, that walking helps you see uh, the world differently, including this bunch of people. Uh, these are the situationists who were active in 1950s uh, Paris. Um, and this lot were basically a bunch of Marxist pissheads who believed that they could smash capitalism by walking about a bit, uh, <laughs> fueled by alcohol. Um, uh, and the thing that they did was uh, this thing called a derive, which is literally a kind of drift across the city, presumably in some sort of alcoholic haze. Uh, and their leader, Guy Debord, the guy on the right, uh, described the derive as this, an opportunity for an utterly new and authentic experience of the different atmospheres and feelings generated by the urban landscape. 
Um, so sort of inspired by this, I decided that I would do my own derive, uh, an APG-themed derive at that. So what I decided to do was to walk between those two great intellectual bastions, AMV and Mother, uh, which are obviously the uh, current joint uh, strategy agencies uh, 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 of the APG. Uh, and so kind of what I was trying to do, what I wanted to do was kind of bottle of recar in hand to trace the sort of intellectual ley lines um, that kind of connect these two sort of august institutions. Um, you know, feeling the force of genius sort of pushing me ever eastward. Um, so that was the plan. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, I did this last Thursday. Um, this was my route. Uh, and here are some of the people, uh, the characters that I met uh, along my route. Hopefully they'll come up. Yes, there they are. Not literally, of course. That would be kind of freaky and weird. Um, so, OK, it, it was six miles. Uh, and it did take me uh, the best part of three hours to complete. And I did get some funny looks along the way. But it was a genuinely consciousness-raising experience. Um, so if anyone wants to discuss the development of post-war uh, 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 council housing, or the history of the 100 Club, uh, or Dr. Johnson's sexual peccadilloes, then I shall be boring uh, for Britain a little bit kind of later on. OK, number three, um, walking connects you to the real world. Walking keeps you real. Um, if you walk, you are unavoidably up close and personal with uh, real people. Um, and you know, for planners, uh, I would still contend that this is a good thing. Um, and I guess kind of any one of us can step outside of our offices and within a few yards uh, be walking among kind of real people as, as opposed to ad people. Um, unless, of course, you work at Ogilvy in Canary Wharf, uh, where when you step outside your office, you will find yourself walking with bankers, um, which is a bit like that program, uh, uh, that old BBC program, Walking with Dinosaurs, uh, except a little bit more reptilian and uh, a lot more rapacious. Um, but I guess kind of lots of creative people have walked among ordinary people um, in order to get inspiration. So Dickens, for instance, was a, a sort of a terrible insomniac. And so he used to pace up and down uh, the streets of uh, London by night. Uh, and the stuff that he encountered there would find its way into his writing. Similarly, uh, Wordsworth and Coleridge were great walkers. They did a lot of walking uh, among ordinary people. And the voices of those ordinary people uh, found their way into their poetry. Uh, which in 1798 was a pretty radical thing and kind of set off a new tradition uh, uh, in English uh, poetry. Uh, so walking helps you kind of keep it real, which is an important thing. The fourth reason why uh, planners should love walking is because walking is a sort of radical act. Um, and I guess if you think about it, uh, you know, walking has always been one of those things um, that sort of is a way of expressing dissent and opposition to kind of what's going on uh, at the moment. So all the way back to something like the Peasants' Revolt in 30, 18, 1381, right through to uh, the present day. So I think if you are a walker, you are in some small way kind of positioning yourself as something of an outsider, uh, something of a contrarian, uh, someone who doesn't kind of accept uh, the status quo. And obviously, that is a great thing for a planner to be. Here are three of my favorite contemporary radical walkers. So Ian Sinclair, we've already seen. Um, he is probably most famous for his book, London Orbital, uh, where he took the perverse decision to walk around the M25 as opposed to drive uh, around it in his car. Um, the bloke in the middle is Nick Papadimitriou, um, and he's just written a 300-page book on a hill in Edgware, about a hill in Edgware. Fair enough. Uh, and on the right, obviously, it's Will Self, um, who is famous for his uh, extreme urban walking. Uh, and here's a little clip of uh, Will Self talking about one of his uh, forms of extreme urban walking, his airport walks. Oh, shit. Is that going to play? No. Why doesn't that play? Damn, damn you. Can you make that work? Is it working? Can't find the file. Oh no! What a disaster! Okay, so what Will Self does is. Oh, can I go back? Uh, it's basically kind of, uh, he talks about violently undercutting the fact of transatlantic air travel, uh, basically by walking from Heathrow, or well, working from his house to Heathrow, and then when he gets off at LAX the other side, walking from LAX to his destination in Hollywood. And he sees this as a sort of violent undercutting of, uh, of international air travel. Whatever floats your boat. Um, now, 
Clearly, I'm not suggesting that we all start walking to Slough for client meetings, uh, although it might be quite entertaining if we did. But I do like the slightly willful uh, and perverse nature of what these guys do. Uh, and I think planners should have more license to be willful and perverse. Um, these guys also have some great pretentious uh, phrases to describe what they do, uh, of which my favourite is this, exploring the liminal. Um, and basically what that means is kind of looking at the boundaries uh, uh, between things, looking at the sort of spaces where things collide. Uh, and I guess kind of that's what we do in some respects. You know, that's where we draw our insight and inspiration, where kind of things come together and the boundaries are sort of slightly blurred. Um, so... Um, if you ever need to get an account director off your back for a week or so, I suggest that you tell them that you are exploring the liminal, uh, and I can guarantee that they will leave you alone. OK, last, last one. Uh, walking helps you collaborate. So walking together helps you think better together. Um, so this goes back to Aristotle, who formed uh, the peripatetic school of philosophy. Uh, and basically that was so called because he and his followers philosophized while walking about. So uh, Aristotle would kind of lecture and uh, his uh, followers would sort of walk along beside him and they'd have a lovely, a lovely chat. Um, a more recent example of sort of uh, collaboration by walking would be um, the work that uh, Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky, if I can say that, uh, did the pioneering work they did on uh, biases uh, in human decision making. And as you can see from the quote, uh, Daniel Kahneman talks about the fact that walks, the long walks that they did together, served as the inspiration for the best work that both of them ever did. So that kind of led me to a thought. Um, and to a modest proposal, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, and the thought is this. What if all planners walked more together? I, th I think if we walked together more, we would see things differently. We'd be more radical. We'd solve more problems. We'd have bigger ideas. We'd have better thoughts. And we'd be more happy, and we'd be a bit fitter as well. So kind of what's not to like? So I think we should put it to the test. I would love to start a new era of plannerly collaboration by walking, where little ideas grow into bigger ideas over the course of a 20-minute perambulation, uh, where we can all be a bit more willful, perverse, and radical, thanks to our walking. And I have a dream that this could really happen. So here is my modest proposal. If you fancy a walk and a chat with another planner, why not say so via the medium of Twitter and the following hashtag? Planning ramble. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and to set the ball rolling, uh, here is my sort of shout out to you. Uh, walking back to Dalston after APG Noisy Thinking, care to join. Thank you for listening.